So today we're talking about function notation. Before we go into the notation though, it's good to refresh our memory on what a function exactly is. In math, a function is basically a math rule. It just relates an input to a single output. Uh, a lot of people think of it as an equation. You put a number into the equation, that's your input, and you get an answer out, and that's our output. Okay. Now when we write things in function notation, we see things that look something like this. See where we've got the f and then we've got x in parentheses next to it? Now, normally in order of operations problems, when you see something next to parentheses, it means multiply. But in function notation, it means something different. All right? This here is, if you were going to read it out loud, you would say f of x. That's how you would pronounce this if you were looking at this and reading it out loud, okay? Now the f, that's the name of the function rule, okay? So we're calling this function rule f. Now the x, that's what you plug in. What you plug in. All right, so that's what you're plugging into the function itself, okay? So when we say f of x, that means we have a function rule called f, and we're putting x into it. And we could put any number in, into it. It doesn't have to be x. It could be, an, uh, it could be a 2. It could be a 5. It could be a 7. Any number, all right? And the best way to understand function notation is to actually do some problems with it. So I've got a couple examples here so we can see, okay? Example, f of x equals 5x plus 1. What is f of 3? All right, so first off, let's understand this. f of x, so we've got a function rule called f, and we put x into it, and the rule is 5 times whatever x is plus 1 equals our answer, all right, our output. So that's our function rule, and this is, this is written in function notation, okay? What we want to know is, if this is our function rule, what is f of 3? In other words, if we put 3 into our rule, what would we get? All right? So what that basically means is, we're going to take 3, and instead of doing 5 times x plus 1, we're going to f of 3 equals, we're going to do f times 3 plus 1. All we're doing is replacing x in our function rule with the 3. All right? And you've probably done stuff like this before. It just didn't look like this. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, and guess what? We found the answer. For the function f, f of 3 would equal 16. Okay? And function rules can be all kinds of different math equations, all right? That was a pretty basic one. Here's a slightly harder one. This one says g of x is equal to 3x squared minus 7. What's g of 2? So notice, this is a different rule. It's got a different name, g, all right? But again, we just apply something to x to get an answer. And in this case, we want to know what g of 2 is. So we're going to put 2 into our rule instead of x. So instead, instead of 3 times x squared, we're going to do 3 times 2 squared minus 7. Okay? And of course, we have to follow the order of operations. We have to do the exponent first. Then we have to multiply second. And we have to subtract last. And there we have it. Okay? So function rules aren't that much different than equations you've used before, they just look a little bit different. It's a different way of thinking about it because we're thinking about taking input and putting it into a rule. And that's why it's written like this. Okay. Now the funny thing about function notation is you don't always have to actually have the rule to answer problems. All right. Down below, this function, h, is given to you in a table. Okay. So it says, use the table to find the indicated values. So here's n, and here's h of n, meaning we have some function rule called h, where every time we put n into it, we get these answers. So if we put 
uh, 2 in for n into our function rule, we get 5, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So let's see what we do with this. Okay. It says find h of 7. So if we put 7 in for n, notice the value of our function, negative 25. And that's your answer. All right. So this time, because we didn't have the rule, we had a table. We could just look at the table and find the answer. Now look at this one. It's a little bit different. It's the opposite. Find n that goes with h of n is equal to negative 7. In other words, if the function equals negative 7, what n value did we use? Well, let's look at our table. h of n is at negative 7 here when n is 4. So that means n must be 4. All right. So function notation, although it looks unusual and different, it's actually not super complicated. All right. It's just a matter of how you think about an equation, putting a number into a rule and calculating an answer. Okay. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.